What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. What's up, you guys? So I hope you all are having like a really great day by the time y'all watching this. I'm going to just say this, girl, this weekend has been one for me that is definitely going to be not truly missed at all. Like when I say this weekend was rough, I had like the worst weekend ever. It was super rough for me and it was very unexpected. I just feel like, you know what, sometimes... <sighs> I don't know how to even put this because I hate to feel like this is a thing, but I mean, reality, it probably really is. But, you know, at first I felt like, you know, the universe was just like putting out negative energy to me. You know how you just, okay. So it started off like this last week. I really decided that I was going to have a really great week. I was going to give myself grace. I was not going to be so hard on myself. And I just was going to allow the week to take its course. And I was just going to follow through. And I was just going to think positive. Because the main thing for me is to think positive. I feel like this. If I woke up above ground, then there's no reason for anything to let my ass down. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I woke up above ground, there's no reason for me to let myself down or anything to let me down. So I just felt like, you know what? I'm going to have all positive vibes. At least this is what I was thinking. I was going to have all positive vibes. I wasn't going to allow anyone or anything just to bring me out of my good vibe, my feng shui. You know, it is what it is, right? I just wasn't. But, and it, it did actually start off really, really well. I, I, I can say that it did. It really, really did. I was complaining for a minute about not getting like a lot of sponsorships anymore and so forth. I was complaining about that. So I just really started feeling down and I had to really realize, found your faith in God and why don't you just uh, give him your 110% faith and just allow him to guide and lead you. And not only was it me telling myself that, but my daughter Tati was also very, very detailed with me about certain things. She made me feel so much better. Just like really made me feel 125% better. So that became a really great week for me. And on Friday, you know, I went to the grocery store. I came in, the case of water fell on me, the, on my feet, it broke open. And then I got stuck in between the washing machine and the other stuff in the laundry room with my tote bags on with groceries and then the groceries was all over. Girl, Friday was, Friday became a day. Friday became a time for me. I'm going to just say that. Okay. And it just started off in the early morning. I had a brand new white t-shirt on. You know, I bought a pack of four, but I ended up getting another pack. So it was a brand new t-shirt. And then I picked, you know, I went to the UPS store for my god, my, my daughter-in-law. And then the, the shirt got filthy, dirty while I the oh girl, it was just enough, okay? I went to the grocery store to get these chicken wings that I really, really liked, okay? And I went to do that, okay? Girl, later on that evening on Friday, it was just a lot for me on Friday. And it was time for me to eat. I took a bite into the chicken. I didn't even bite the bone of the wing. Girl, please tell me why my motherfucking tooth came out. So that's when my weekend really became like shit because my tooth broke off my crown. Not no fucking veneer, but a crown. You know, a crown is the one that covers your whole entire tooth. Crown broke off and I didn't even, it didn't feel like it was going to break. It didn't look like it was going to break. But I did notice there was like this little tiny space in between the crown and the other tooth. Space enough to where you can put um, a floss to it. Now, it was never like that before. They were very close. Why my motherfucking tooth broke off? And now when I look at the tooth, because it's still inside the crown, the crown is in perfect condition. Why do they shave it down so thin? Like, this little tooth looked like it was holding on for dear life. Like, straight up. It, it was holding on by thread. But that was when my entire day... See? Look at this. Perfect condition. This is when my entire night and weekend became like so stressful. Finally, Sunday, I was OK. But Saturday and Friday, I was in tears. Like when I say I was in tears, I was in tears because for years I have been trying so hard to just keep my teeth intact. And y'all know when I first started out with YouTube, I had this big gap in my mouth and my two front teeth. And that was because my teeth moved. They shifted from being removed from my back teeth, my wisdom teeth and stuff being removed. My two front teeth started spreading. That is what started happening on the bottom. Okay. And I swore that I was going to continue working on my teeth, which I was, I still was, you know, I just left the dentist. I think it was like back in June, right? Either June or July when I had another extraction done and a crown put in, I just finished doing that. Okay. 
So I was still working on my top teeth and I was eventually going to get to the bottom. Girl, please tell me why the motherfucking tooth broke off and the tooth that broke off was at the top, but it wasn't even in the back to where you can't see it, but it was in the front. So you know why I'm crying, girl. I'm like, oh my God, I'm never going to go outside anymore. I'm going to be made fun of. I don't want nobody looking in my mouth, et cetera, et cetera. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? I already got a tooth missing on the side. Now I got this one in the front missing. Oh my God, I was in tears. I was depressed. I was literally depressed depressed all weekend. I went to bed Saturday night at six o'clock and I wasn't going to sleep, but I just had had enough of the day. I was just like really sad and down. And like people don't realize some people, it doesn't bother them about their teeth, but my teeth make me feel very self-conscious. And I just be feeling really self-conscious about a lot of things. Like we be hard on ourselves. And I think I just be overly too hard. And I've been trying to stop being like that, but this really just didn't help me not one fucking bit. Okay. So I'm like, I'm not even really embarrassed about it because it is what it is. Um, I just left the dentist and I'm about to have some new teeth in like maybe like three weeks. It'll probably take um, like a month. I'll have like my I'll have new teeth, not one, but three new motherfucking teeth. OK, um, my tooth um, actually broke up all the way in the gum, my own actual tooth. So the crown is in perfect condition. The dentist said he could have fixed it, but because it was so far up into my mouth, there was no way for him to put the tooth back on. But he could have. OK, Um and the only thing else to do is I either had two options, which was to get a bridge, which will, they'd have to remove this crown and this one. And I don't really want my teeth to be removed um, only because he said these two crowns in the front are like really great structure. They're so good. They're, they, he doesn't foresee them coming out anytime soon, but I don't really want to pay for that. Like it was like to get a whole bridge for three new teeth um, would have been three thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars but he gave me thirty percent off which would have made it twenty four which would have made it two thousand four hundred ninety three dollars with two in payment in storage deal they will let you do payments but you only can do two so it's half and half so i would have had to pay one thousand two hundred forty six dollars i didn't want just the one two i would have had three new teeth but i don't need new crowns so i'm getting a partial a dental a denture partial with three new teeth okay because i have teeth 10 12 and 14 missing from here here and here so you know i have 10, 12, and 14 missing. That's three teeth up there. So with the partial, it's $1,012. He gave me a 30% off. So I get to pay two times, $506. So I was really happy about that because I did want to get a partial anyway on the side. But I just felt really, really fucked up for the weekend because of my tooth. Now, I'm going to show y'all. And at the end of the day, like, I really felt embarrassed. I was like, I'm not about to do no videos. I'm not about to do nothing. I'm just going to do voiceovers for the rest of my life. But I ain't the only motherfucker out here with a missing tooth or teeth, okay? Let's just be for real. Let's just be for real. Now, all my life, I've been taking care of my teeth. My mother has taken me to the dentist since I was a kid. So it ain't about not being able to afford to be at the dentist because my mama always made sure that my teeth was taken care of at the dentist. Even if we had Medicaid, which we did, the dentist that she brought me to in New York City when we was, you know, when I was a kid was, uh, was a great doctor. He worked on my teeth and my teeth were in outstanding condition. But... As you get older, you have children, your teeth break up. But my mother also did say there is something hereditary that has to do with your gums or your teeth. And that's why my mom's teeth have been falling out. So I don't know if I have that same issue. But, girl, let me tell you. Let me just tell you. When I tell you that I'm kind of happy today because I got me a tooth coming in the mail today, too. I bought me a tooth off of Amazon just to, you know, to hold me down until then because I don't really want to be seen looking like this. But it is what it is because I ain't the only motherfucker out here that got a missing tooth. OK, everybody got a missing tooth up on the side somewhere. But a girl had two missing on the side. Now I got one semi to the left side and all the way to the side. It just brought me down. It made me feel really some type of way. And I just felt really like ashamed, embarrassed, self-conscious. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But it is what it is. Um. I'm getting my new teeth and they're going to be dentures. Like, you know, my little pop in partials, partials with three new teeth on it. And I'm going to pop those in my mouth. And it is what it is. At least I can get that. You know what I'm saying? There are people, like I said, that are way off worse than me, but it is what it is. Okay. It is what it is. Well, I'm going to show y'all and I don't really give a fuck if nobody don't like it. You know, I'm going to show y'all and I really don't care if somebody got something to say or, you know, because listen, I'm going to get that shit fixed though. And I'm still be cute. Just like my daughter said to me, y'all, you still cute though, with your little missing tooth. So here goes. It's right there in the front. 
And then there's a, a missing tooth right here too. And here too. So, you know, you can never really see. You can sometimes see this one. But, you know, I try not to laugh so hard to where you can see it. I've, I've always been self-conscious of it. And if I notice it in a video, I definitely edit out. Because people always got something smart to say. But then I have to realize, fuck what people got to say. You're not paying my bills over here. You're not doing anything for me. Bitch, I'm still cute at the end of the day. Okay? So here's my missing tooth. This is the tooth that broke off. That's it. I feel I feel a lot better though today. I do. I feel a lot better because I bought me an Amazon tooth. Okay. And I just feel better because I left the dentist. So I'm gonna have me some new teeth in a few weeks. Okay. Yeah. But other than that, girl, okay, so I went to my doctor. I think it was either Wednesday. I really want to say it was Wednesday that I went to the doctor. Okay, so my doctor, Dr. Rachel, brought me back in because, you know, she wanted to do a weight checkup. She didn't know I stopped taking the fetch me because it was making me feel really irritable, excuse me, irritable, sick, moody, nauseous, weak. It just was making me feel not so great. She did let me know that there were a couple patients that said the same thing to her. She said I was the second patient that told her about the mood swings and such, and it is known for that. But um, she did tell me that I could have taken half the pill. I wasn't aware of that. So I was, start, I was supposed to restart on taking them, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. But the cool thing about it is when I went there... I lost over seven pounds. I don't even know how I did, but I guess because I stopped eating after like seven o'clock, I stopped eating before seven. I lost a little bit over seven pounds. That was last week. I probably lost more because I'm stressed the fuck out. Okay, I don't know. Um, hopefully it's not my thyroid because my mother has thyroid issues. So hopefully it's not that, but, um, and I've been tested. But anyway, other than that, you know, this weekend was really rough for me. Um, and it is, you know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm missing a tooth, but that's okay. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to have a new suit, okay? But other than that, I hope you guys are having like a really great day. I just wanted to share that with you guys because normally my weekends, I just try to make them be positive as ever. And I did, but I really just, it was just a hard weekend for me to get through. And I know I shouldn't allow things like that to get to me, but each person is different. We all go through different things. And, you know, I just feel like, I just, I don't know. I was crying a lot because I just felt like I was falling apart. I didn't have anything anymore. And when I say have anything anymore, I don't mean like materialistic things, but I just felt like I was falling apart. My hair was thin, it's thinning and falling out. I gained so much weight. My teeth are falling out. It, it just really brought me to a, a part in my life that I just felt really, really ugly. You understand what I'm saying? And I know that we as women go through a lot, but I just felt so ugly as soon as my tooth fell out, like I already felt like a certain way about my, my appearance as it was like with my hair and my weight, I already felt a certain appearance of her, a certain way about my appearance. And then losing of the tooth was just like the, the, the most, I, I just couldn't deal with it anymore. And it really made me feel sad for the entire weekend. I don't want to say to use the words depressed because I don't, I'm not a doctor. I'm not diagnosing myself, but I really felt sad and I really felt hurt. And it was just a really rough weekend for me. But Sunday, you know, I woke up, I felt much better. Um, because I found me a tooth and bought me a tooth. So I didn't allow it to get to me. Um, I'm not going to allow it to get to me because at the end of the day, like I said, I'm going to have me a new tooth. Okay. But other than that, Today, we have a great sponsor. This week, of course, we have my favorites at Dossier. So I'm going to share with you guys the new perfumes that they sent me. And then we're going to just jump right into this real talk. Okay. So you already know how I feel about Dacia Perfume. They have the most affordable membership ever when it comes to Inspired Scents. They also do carry home scents along with their own scents as well. So Dacia is a membership. You don't have to do the membership, but if you choose to, it is $39 a month and you can always skip a month. So if you skip a month, that means you are stacking up your coins on Dacia. So I always love Dacia because everything that I get from them is amazing. The scent is good. I have compared them to the originals. And when I tell you I have compared them to the originals, they have been dead smack on like 99.9 
99%. You are the Inspire set, okay? When I get perfumes from them, I love it. And I also do share them with my daughters here as well. Because one person can definitely use a lot of Inspired or a lot of scents, but I just like to share too. I did get one that is a return here in my home, which is the Ambery Vanilla. It's by Saint Laurent's Black Opium. And when I tell you it is dead smack on, it is definitely a dead smack on scent. My daughter, Mumsy, she absolutely loves the scent. There is nothing left in the bottle. So I'm going to definitely give this to her at the end of the day. But yes, Ambery Vanilla is a 99.9. .9. You are the father of a Saint Laurent's Black Opium. They come in these quaint bottles, which I absolutely love. And they're magnetic tops. Ambery Vanilla. And this is a return in my home. And my daughter Mumsy absolutely loves it. You do get these stock cards, which gives you the ingredients and such of each perfume. So Ambery Vanilla, if you love um, a Saint Laurent's Black Opium, you'll definitely want to get Ambery Vanilla. So the next one is called Woody Sandalwood. And I'm like a very earthy, woodsy person. I love I love like musk, like Egyptian musk or sandalwoods. I love like those, like those, those scents like that, like are very woodsy, earthly tones. That's me. So this one is Woody Sandalwood and it is inspired by Lilabo's Santal 33 Oud de Parfum. Now this has hints of violet leaves, um, cardamom and cedarwood and sandalwood, musk and amber. I love those scents. I do also like floral scents as well, but for me, I love anything that has like a woodsy or earthly tone smell. I love this perfume. I absolutely love this one. I feel like this is a unisex one. I'll definitely let you guys know. I've noticed with Dossier, the unisex ones always have like this yellowish tint to it. But when I tell you this smells so good, you can definitely wear this on a man and a woman. And the scent is amazing. When I tell you this smells amazing, girl, get this one. Get this one. If you love like woodsy and sandalwood and like musky smells or Egyptian musk, this one, woody sandalwood, will definitely be one that you can use. And plus, if you got a man, girl, you can share it with him too. There's nothing wrong with sharing. Okay. Now, what did I tell y'all? Dossier has their own. They have their own originals, okay? Now, theirs come in these cute orange boxes, and these are their own scents. Now, as I was saying, I love, like, that woodsy smell. I love anything that's, like, earthly. This one is called Oud and Rose on Fire, and you also do have a stock card with these. This is the Genderless Collection. This one right here has notes of pink pepper, pear, vegan honey, rose, saffron, vanilla, musk, and plum. Whenever I'm choosing a perfume, I always seem like I get a musk when it comes to the notes. And, girl... If you have never tried Dossier's um, Originals, girl, it smells like something. You know what this reminds me of? Like a really good tea. It smells like a really good tea. This is a scent that I can definitely put on myself and also in my home. It reminds me of like a good incense. You ever smell an incense, not the fruity incense, but like if you go to like an Indian store, you get like our Muslim store, you get those really, really good incense that have like those earthly smells. Like, are you, have you ever been to like a health food store and you can smell like the healthiness in there? This is what it reminds me of. That's the only thing that I could compare it to, but it smells really, really good. If you love smells like that, I would definitely say get the Oud and Rose on fire because it has like this very engaging smell. It just smells so inviting. And that's the only way I can put it. Very, very inviting. And another one from the genderless collection, which is also one of Dossier's originals, is the Orchid and Sandalwood at Dust. This one has notes of cardamom, incense, clove, orchid, jasmine, orris, cinnamon, sandalwood, and patchouli. I love to say that word. I'm not really sure what it is about the word patchouli, but it's just like a tongue twister. And girl, you either are going to say it right or you're not going to say it at all. But patchouli, it just sounds really, really fun to say. I'm just saying it just does. Okay. Ah. And it's not as strong as the other one, the oud and rose on fire, but it also gives you like that very unisex smell, very outdoorsy smell. Not like you're smelling outside. You know, you smell like outside when you was a kid. You, you come back and your mother be like, you smell like outside. Not that kind of smell, but like a really natural nature smell, like trees and just, just the surroundings. Like I love stuff that smell like just like nature. And also, like I said, it's unisex. Now about this perfume, Central Carnell and Spicy Velvety Florals. So the scent family is woody and floral in this one. Okay, let me just tell y'all something real quick. I love a good perfume. I love when people tell me to smell good. Now I'm going to say this, and this is not part of this collection, but I do have this one by Dossier. And it is the Spire Yves Saint Laurent Libre. Whenever I wear their version of Yves Saint Laurent's Libre, people be like, you smell so good. What is that you got on? What is that? Oh, you smell so good. So if you ain't got one perfume, perfume from them yet, you definitely want to get their Inspire Scent by Yves Saint Laurent's Libre. Get it when you can, honey. I'll link everything down below for Dossier. Yeah. Hey guys, we're going to get on to this Real Talk for today. I do have two, but other than that, girl, let's get into this Real Talk.
right, you guys. So this one is called Real Talk. How am I going to make it? April, you posted you posted a vlog on September 12th, 2024. And at the beginning of that vlog, the caption read, you must tell yourself no matter how hard it is or how hard it gets, I'm going to make it. I'm calling this Real Talk email, how am I going to make it? For some time now, I've wanted to send a Real Talk wanting your feedback on the situation. However, I know it may be triggering for you because we both have gone through a similar situation and I don't want to bring sadness upon anyone. April, you can call me Michi. In June of 2021, my life changed. I received a call no parent wants to receive. My son had been in an accident. Long story short, he was riding one of those stupid scooters and was struck by a vehicle which caused the worst head injury a person could endure. Without stating all the graphic details, September 2021, I received a call that my son had taken a turn for the worse and I needed to get to the hospital immediately. April, I held my grown adult son until he took his final breath. When he took his final breath, a piece of me went with him. I don't know how to move on. I'm here living each day. However, my oldest of three sons is gone and I can't shake that one of my precious children is no longer living. I try to be happy, but I'm just masking hurt and pain. I drive and I often see his face. I want to hear or read a text message that says, hey mommy, how are you doing? So many thoughts go through my head and heart and I haven't been happy since that day in 2021. I've been to therapy and I don't think it helped. I swear, if one person tells me I'll get over it, I'm going to slap the shit out of them. I mean it. I will take any advice at this point. It was difficult for me to write this. I continue to weep while writing. I don't know what else to do. It's hard to share my feelings with my other children because I know they are hurting too. Help. Thank you, a grieving mom. Uh, for this, I definitely had to fight back the tears for a second because, first of all, um, I want to say my condolences to you, Miji. I send you all my love and my heart is in my arms of just virtual hugs to you. I wish that you were nearby because I definitely would want to just sit down and talk with you. Um, I also want to thank you for your consideration of not trying to make anyone sad right now at the moment, but some people may be saddened by it. It's, it, it, may, it, it didn't trigger me but it hurt me to read this because I don't ever want anybody to feel the pain that I feel and have felt when I lose, when I lost my son, like no parent ever wants to bury their children. And like you, you know, I'm going to just share how I had to try. I can understand how you feel. I know how you feel. I know how you feel. And it took me a long time and it wasn't really a long time, but it took me some time in the beginning of my grief, I honestly just didn't want to feel the pain. And I just really wanted to be happy because nobody wants to feel that pain. Like there's pain and there's pain. Like there's like, oh, that hurts pain. And then there's that pain that's in your heart and in your mind and in your soul. That's just, that's the worst pain that anybody could ever feel. Like when they lose a kid, you know, losing a parent too is just as bad. But when you have to lose your own child, that's like the worst. You know what I'm saying? And so there was a time when I really couldn't talk about it with people. And sometimes it does it does bother me to talk about it. But you know what? I'm, I just be grateful that I gotten a little bit stronger over the years. But it, it takes time, sweetheart. And this is not a pain in a, in, in a process that happens overnight, like for real. Like, and I'm going to tell you this. When I, when I um, first started grieving over my son, like when it first happened, you know, of course, that's just grief right there. But over the past couple of years after, I still was in a lot of pain and um, it was hard for me to talk about. And I did I did see a therapist and it was, it, I don't know if she was like a godsend, if we were supposed to be entwined with one another, but it was so strange. It was, it was her, her, my therapist's brother, he had passed away also. Her brother's birthday was the same day as my son's birthday. So that's where we kind of like connected a lot. But, you know, she was kind of like going through the same grief. So it was easy for me to talk to her because she kind of understood where I, I was coming from, but not really so much because she's just a sibling. And I'm not taking anything away from any of the siblings, but for the parents, it's just as hard. And I, I, I honestly want to feel like the therapy was good for me for a certain for, 
from a standpoint. But then a part of me did feel like it wasn't that great. But I also did feel the comfort of being able to talk to somebody that really wasn't in my family and didn't know me like 100 percent, you know, could just listen to me. And I feel like therapy is really, really good because even if you feel like it's not good and you may not be getting the answers that you want all the time, just think about your being able to open up and be vulnerable to someone who's really not going to judge you. You understand what I'm saying? But in the beginning process of the first couple of years of me grieving, I just really wanted to be over with it, like straight up. I did want to be over with the feeling because I was so tired. I was so tired of um going through the pain. I got tired of missing my son. I got tired of feeling like it was my fault for moving here. I got tired of feeling like I should have never let him go hang out with his friends. I got tired of missing him. I got tired of not being able to have a dream of him. I got tired of a lot. And it just was a lot for me to go through. Sorry, guys. I didn't really don't I don't really like to cry so much on camera because I just don't. I just don't. I just needed to just I need a moment. But I just really got tired with just feeling the hurt and the pain. And I realized like you have to go through that because if you don't go through that, you're never going to get to a point where you're going to be okay. And I never realized that like nobody wants to be in pain and nobody wants to feel the hurt and the sorrow. But in reality, you have to go through it. And I understand that I felt the same way. Like I, I didn't want to talk to my kids about it or my family because I didn't want to make nobody else feel sad. And that was me. I didn't want to make anyone feel the same way that I felt. And I know that's like a hard pill to swallow, but I just really didn't want anyone to feel like how I felt inside. You know, I would find myself every day, like just talking to my son. I would always talk to him and <laughs> I would drive in my own car by myself and I would just start talking to my son. And, you know, I would just start talking to myself. Some people may have felt like I was like losing it, but I wasn't losing it. It was just my way of releasing stuff and being able to communicate whether he could hear me or not. It was me being able to let out the pain that I felt um, losing him. And I honestly never really thought that I would um get through this. <sighs> I never did. I never thought that I would be able to get through this. And a lot of me still hasn't, but that's okay because it's a life journey, right? And I have good days and I have bad days. But I never, never kick myself down for feeling the way I feel. I feel like we just have to go through to grieve in order to get to a certain point where we can be semi-happy. First couple of years of my life when after losing my son were the worst. They really were. Um, it was hard for me to hear like certain songs because they would remind me of him. And um, hearing those certain songs would really break me down bad. They would just really break me down. <laughs> Um, I still think about life with him here, what it would be like, you know, because he missed out on seeing his last nephew and his, his niece be born, his last two nephews and his niece be born, excuse me. Um, and I always talk to my grandkids about him. You know, I always, I always talk to my grandkids about him. Um, what I did learn though, excuse me. What I have learned over the years, because it has been since 2019, has been five years. Um, what I have learned is you just have to really allow yourself grace and time. You can't rush happiness. You can't rush the grieving process. You can't rush getting through it. You can't. Because if you do that, it's just going to make it worse on you. Trust me when I tell you. I try so hard to just get through it and to, to become happy and just to be able to cope every day. But it made it worse for me. And I think that's what made me a lot more hurt just trying to get over the hurt. And I just had to allow myself to get through it. 
Um, a lot of times I did a lot of things just to make myself feel good. What I mean by that is, you know, I made a mural wall in my house with my son, you know, so it's dedicated to him. All his pictures are hanging on the wall. And it was the wall that's the other side of that wall was his bedroom. You know, I did that and I was able to see the good in that. You know, I did have someone here one time say that it was kind of creepy. And how could I be able to look at that every day? But you don't know because you never lost a child. How dare you say anything like that? But me being able to see those pictures every day, all day allows me to feel like he's still here. He may not be here physically, but he he, he is spiritually in my mind, in my heart. Um, I do have a couple of recordings of his voice and I, I do have videos of him. In the beginning, it was so hard for me to look at those pictures, listen to his voice. In the beginning, as in first few years, like the first few, three years, it was hard for me to listen to those because I just couldn't. You know, I just wasn't through the process. And I'm not saying that I'm through the process yet, but it just takes time over years, you know. So I was able to, you know, go through the process over the years within time. But when you rush yourself and you try to, not saying that you are rushing yourself, but when you just want to get over the pain, that's like trying to rush it. You got to just let the process go. You got to allow your body to let the process go. For me, um, a lot of the reasons why I am single still to this day, and I've said this before, and a lot of people probably don't understand, but I, I'm single not because I don't want a man, because I don't, but I'm only single because I don't have it in my heart to allow anybody in right now. You know what I'm saying? Like the void that I feel, um, I need time to heal within myself. So I can't allow anybody else into my life because I need to get through what I'm going through. My loss, my heart, my heart is broken. You know what I'm saying? My heart is really broken from losing my son. So I can't allow anyone into my life new because my heart is broken. And I think about my son every single day. Still, you know, I think about him every day. So... I'm still going through the process, but I promise you, Michi, it does get better. It will get better. You just got to give it time and don't rush yourself into the process. Just allow yourself to take all the time you need, because that is the main thing, is just to give yourself time, give yourself grace. I feel like therapy is a great thing because we may not always get the answers that we want, but we have somebody that's going to listen to us who we know we may not make them feel as sad as we would our family members, but that person is not going to judge us. And it is a lot easier to talk to someone that's just there to listen to you. And that's what my counselor did. She listened to me. She didn't give me a lot of suggestions, but the one suggestion she did give to me was you got to give it time, April. So I did let her know, like, you know, I don't want to go through this anymore. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't want to be crying. I would feel sometimes, I'm going to share this with you guys. There was a long period of time after my son died that I didn't want to go outside. Okay? I didn't want to go outside. And I didn't go outside. And that was because I felt guilty. I felt guilty that I get to see the sky and the sun and the living things and he doesn't. I felt guilty for that. You know what I'm saying? I did. And I stayed in the house, you know, and over time, of course, I did go outside and I stopped feeling that way. But I would talk to my son every single day, sometimes twice or three times a day. I have yet to have a dream of my son. I have never dreamt of my son at all. And I miss him. He was the one who would call me mommy, too. Um, Mumsy calls me that and. Tati calls me that sometimes, but Wuzzle, yeah, he he was. He was a great kid. He was a great kid. And, you know, it's hard when you lose someone, but when you lose your child, it's really, really hard. And I realized with myself that for the longest, I never used 
the past tense words like was like you just heard me say he was a great kid i just was finally able to say those things because i was in denial for a very long time you know and i think you just have to allow yourself to go through that grieving process because if you don't it's just going to take it's just going to be harder on you so michi go through that go through that process allow yourself to cry allow yourself to grieve allow yourself to remember your son and if you don't want to talk to anybody talk to your counselor talk to your therapist i promise you it will make you feel a lot better just being able to say certain things even if she doesn't give you the answers that you may be wanting to hear because there's no right or wrong answers to grieving no one can tell you how long you can grieve no one can tell you when to grieve no one can tell you that it's good or bad to grieve no one can tell you this you're just going to go through the process and that's one thing that she did tell me there's no right or wrong way to grieve there's no time frame when she told me that i was like you know what april this is when you got to let go and just allow it to just happen because nobody wants to feel hurt. Nobody wants to feel pain when they lose someone. And so we do try to get through it. We try to just forget. We try to just make ourselves happy. I wasn't happy for the longest, like straight up, you know, I, I wasn't happy for a very long time. I finally became happy maybe like two years ago, a year and a half ago. You know what I'm saying? I finally became to where I, I didn't feel guilty of smiling. I didn't feel guilty of not being happy anymore, being happy. I never, I, I felt guilty of being happy for a long time. And I finally have been able to not feel guilty about being happy because I know in my heart, my son would never have allowed me to feel this way. And I just couldn't accept that in the beginning, but I just had to let myself go through the process. And regardless about what anybody else may think, you have to do this for yourself. You don't have to rush yourself to be happy. You don't have to rush yourself to get through this. You don't have to take on anybody else's burden. You have to do what makes you feel good inside. You have to do what makes you feel right. And allowing time to take its time and, and, and allow you to be able to grieve and get through the process is the number one important thing. Like, honestly, Michi, I'm going to just say this. I don't even, I never even seen myself at this point in my life, after my son passed away and I was I was grieving for so long, I never was able to see myself being happy again. You know, I, I had to stop doing a lot of things because I just felt like I just couldn't anymore. But where I'm at now, I never foresaw myself being here like I, I never did. And like it's still new for you. 2021 was still new. And you just got to allow yourself. You're going to get to that point. And I can't give you a time frame. I can't give you a date. And I can't even tell you how. But you are eventually. And you just got to allow it to happen. When you don't allow it to happen is when it's tougher on you. Trust me when I tell you. I did not like that feeling of being in pain and hurt. I didn't. I didn't at all. And I still to this day go through a lot missing my son. You know, I, I lost interest in myself, to be honest with you. That is a lot to do with my weight gain. And that's why I always tell you guys I'm disappointed in myself because I let myself go. After my son passed away, I really just didn't care anymore. And it wasn't even that I didn't care, but I just really didn't care about how I looked or how I came across to a person, I let myself go. And, and I, I need to learn to stop saying I let myself go because that's something negative. I didn't allow myself to let go. I didn't let myself go. I'm grieving and I'm going through something. And even though I may seem happy on the outside, the shell in the inside, I'm still going through something. And that's the way, and that's the reason why I have gained the weight because I just, it's not that I didn't care, but I didn't care. You know, I had too much, heaviness on my heart. You feel me? So never put yourself down, never rush yourself and just realize that your time is going to be there. There's no time frame. Just like my therapist said, there's no time frame. We just got to allow the process. We just got to allow the process. I hope that what I have said to you is helpful and honey, please don't feel bad about making me or anyone sad that I had to re that listen to this real talk because it's life. And we all have been here in a time of our lives. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad that I'm and the person that you came to and was able to open up to. Girl, you can send me your phone number and we can chat on the phone if you like. 
I have no problem with that. We can cry together. But I just feel like I'm happy where I'm at now in life. And I know that in time, it'll really get better because I think about my son every day. I do. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about him. I think about him every day, still a few times a day, you know, but now I'm able to smile when I do. When I hear that certain song come on, I'm able to get through it. Sometimes I'm not. And you know what I do? I just turn it off. Sometimes I got to turn it off. I used to didn't turn the song off because I felt like I was being disrespectful to my son. But now I have the strength and the courage and the knowledge to where I just turn the song off. You know, I'm, I'm able to walk away from it because I know how it's going to make me feel. So just take your time, baby, and do things that will make you happy for your son, you know, in honor of him. If you ladies have any, you know, suggestions or you just want to share your story about losing someone, then leave it below. Leave it below. But Michi, I'm here for you and you could definitely email me your phone number. And I love to talk with you. All right, guys. So I apologize. I had to get myself together. I had to take a, a breather for a minute, you know. I had to walk away from everything for a few minutes here, 25 minutes. You know, I just sat. I went downstairs. I got me something to drink, you know, sat there for a second. and had to take a breather just to gather myself back, you know. It's not that it's a hard topic for me at times, but, you know, I feel like I really don't like to cry around other people. Just the same thing that Michi was saying. She don't want to make other people feel sad because I don't either. But, you know, I do try to just hold myself together, like pull yourself together type of thing. And, um, you know, it's hard. Grief is like the hardest thing to get over. And, you know, there are so many different things that I've had to do within my time to be able to get through this grief that I'm going to go through for the rest of my life. And it's a journey. It's a life journey. It's just a time process. It's a process. It's just a process, you know, and it's a process that just really can't be rushed. And I'll be the first one to admit, like, yeah, I, I've rushed myself through it in the beginning few years. And I think it had a lot to do with more pain of just me trying to get out of the pain. Nobody wants to be in pain. And I know, I, I don't know, but I hope and pray that in the future for me, that my heart is less heavy and maybe commend itself. But for the time now, I can admit my heart is broken. You know, my heart is broken. So that's why I really don't allow like a lot of people in my life. You know, I, I just don't. And I, you know, that's still part of the grieving process. And I'll get through that part one day too. When, I don't know, but I will. So we're going to move along to the next room. So this one right here was a doozy. And I was really like shocked. I mean, but people are people everywhere you go. Each person is going to react and behave the way they're going to behave. It just sucks that when you have like something really special in a bed, you know, people have to act up and show their true, true selves. It sucks when it's alcohol involved too. Okay. Dysfunctional family, real talk, dysfunctional family. Hi, Miss April. I want to thank you in advance for taking the time to read my email. My name is Kylie and I have been and I have recently been married a few months back to the man of my dreams. We both have never been married. We both have one children. My son is 15 and his son is 17 and they both get along so well. I was so glad to find someone who had the same interest as myself and also the fact that our children get along so well. My son needed a father figure because his biological father passed away when he was a baby due to a drunk driver. Well, everyone in my husband's family, I thought liked me and my son, at least that was what I thought because I had been so I had been to so many of his family functions and events and they all seemed like they approved of us. Well, Miss April, I was wrong. I was so wrong. The night of our wedding, you know, we all have we all having a great time partying. My family and his family just vibing. Some of the guests were drunk because it was open bar, but some do not know how to hold or handle their liquor. His cousins from down south, whom both are females, they got to really drinking and acting besides themselves. Along with that, they were sisters. Well, his two cousins, my husband's two cousins, started becoming loud and started throwing shots directed towards myself and my son. Now, the one cousin said she is married and has no children and is the sister, like I said, to the other female whom was also drunk there with a date, not married, and no children. So I started hearing the both of these crackling hens 
saying how they would have never married me with my ready-made family, et cetera, et cetera. So, of course, I approached the one in the ladies' room as she happened to be there when I went in. But she tried to say she tried to say that was what was bothering me and gave me major attitude before leaving the bathroom. She then made the remark as, well, you are a ready-made family, though, ain't you? And then left out the bathroom. When I got back to the reception, my sister and mother were asking me if everything was okay. They could tell I was upset. I did speak to them, and they swore not to mention anything. But as the night progressed on, I noticed they were being even louder and giving me dirty looks and was overheard by members of my family talking nasty about me. This is where my older aunt let them know it may be best for them to stop drinking or leave because they were making a scene and making others uncomfortable. Miss April, when I tell you the both of these women started getting louder and irate towards my elderly aunt, it was heard through the entire reception. My husband tried to de-escalate things, but they got louder saying, yeah, you married a baby mama, a ready made family, etc. When I tell you my mother started to tell the security to please remove them, then my husband's mother got involved, started getting in my mother's face, saying they don't have to leave, they're correct, she is already made family, and her son deserves better. When I tell you the end of the night didn't turn out great, my brother and father had to remove my mother because she was ready to put the hands on my so-called mother-in-law, who was still yelling nasty things about me being a baby mama and how I forced my son onto her son and her grandson because he's got no father at all. My husband was so embarrassed, he left the venue in tears right along with me. He has been saying his mother wants to reach out and talk to me, but Miss April, it's been months, and honestly, I'm not sure I want to speak to this lady or have anything to do with them. Okay. So basically what I got from this email is Kylie just was married a few months ago to the man of her dreams. First, let me send out a congratulations on that because who don't want to meet the man of their dreams? Okay. But in the midst of this, Kylie does have one son who is now 15 and unfortunately lost his father by a drunk driver. And the man of her dreams she met, he also has a son who is 17. There's nothing to say about his mo the mother of his child. But she just wanted to put this is the reason why she is a single mother, basically. She did get married to this man and they had what was supposed to be a great reception turned out to be a disaster because her husband's family members from down south started being irate, disrespectful, unmindful, and definitely not demure once they started sipping on a yak, okay? They got besides themselves, started calling out people out of their names and called her a ready-made family. That's cruel. You know why that's cruel? Because, excuse me? She's a ready-made family. Even if she is a ready-made family, what's that to say about her husband? Because he got a baby, too. He got a son, too. He got a kid, too. Meanwhile, she thought that she was in, like, fling with this family because she went to all the family functions, the family events, and they were very welcoming, open arms. She said she thought she was, okay? She found out the wrong and hard way that she wasn't, okay? So not only did her husband's cousins call her a ready-made family, but her mother-in-law said the same thing. Her mother-in-law also stated that Kylie forced her son onto her now husband and her now stepson. And she is also a ready-made family. So her mother-in-law agrees that Kylie is a ready-made family and her son deserves better. So what are your son then? What is, what is Kylie's husband then? He's not a ready-made family because he got a son too. That's 17. This is the part where I don't understand Men should have the same standards and should be put at the same standards as women. He's a single dad. He has his son. And I'm not sure how often he has a son. I'm not sure if his son lives with him or he just visits with him. But she did state that her son and his son get along just well. So either he lives with his father or he's there quite often. Either way, her son and his son have had a bonded relationship and they get along well, which is a great thing because blended families are sometimes a little bit hard in the beginning to blend. And at the end, it comes like a really great mixture, but it seems like she didn't have a problem at all. But now we got the mother-in-law's true feelings because she said she is a ready-made family. Let me tell you something. I understand his mother may want to, you know, speak to you. Maybe she wants to apologize. Maybe she wants to, you know, give her reasons as to why she feels this way or give her reasons as to why anyone may have been disrespectful and unmindful at the reception. You know, that's great. But here's my thing, Kylie. 
You need to do it when you're ready to do it. Don't allow nobody to force you to speak to his mother. If you don't want to talk to her today, tomorrow, next year, then you don't have to talk to her. It's not your responsibility to talk to her and to make things right between you and her. It's not. It's her responsibility. But now she has to do it on your own terms. Let me tell you something about in-laws. They could be really, really challenging. And y'all know I have my own fair share of that bullshit, okay? I'm not about to sit here and talk about them no more because I'm just really trying to, you know, make my ex-in-law family the last of my life, okay? Like, what I mean by that is I'm 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 making them irrelevant because that's what they are. But I really don't like to talk about them anymore at all because I just really need them to be irrelevant in my in my life and because that is the... That is the the feeling that they gave me. I was irrelevant, so I really need to make them feel irrelevant at this point. And I know that may sound mean and nasty to some people, but I really feel like I need them to be irrelevant in my life at all times. You know what I'm saying? So, but I do understand the whole concept of in-laws and so forth. You know, it doesn't matter if you try your hardest to make your mother-in-law, your father-in-law happy. They're going to feel the way they feel about you regardless. Now, here's one thing that I, as a mother-in-law, don't do and I try not to do. I ain't trying to be up in y'all business. You know what I'm saying? When I speak about my daughter-in-law, I speak of her very highly because for one, I love my daughter-in-law to pieces. She has given me four beautiful grandsons. And not only that, but she puts up with my son, who is a handful, okay? And if you could put up with him, then you definitely are, like, you are blessed and to come. But I also do say that because I know her so well and she's an amazing person and an amazing mother, I really sometimes, you know, I do feel like, I used to feel like, she deserves better. And the reason why I say I used to feel like that is because I just try not to be in their business no more. That's why I'm saying used to, because I don't really want to be a part of none of their business, none of their turmoil, none of their disagreements, none, none of it. I don't want to be a part of it, none of it. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. None of it. Okay. That's me minding my motherfucking business. Okay. In a nutshell. But I would never be disrespectful to her because that's who he chose. And that's who she chose. Not me. Regardless if they had a ready-made family or not. I just feel like this. Me personally, if I had a son who met a woman that had a child and he treated her like the queen that she is, then I would be so happy because I too have been a single mother. And I feel like every woman deserves respect despite them being a single mother or not. They deserve respect. And if another man could walk along into a woman's life and pick up the pieces for her and her child, then kudos to him because he deserves to be known as that guy who picked up the pieces. Now, the sad part about this whole fiasco of the wedding, the wedding reception, and them calling her a ready-made family, the sad part about it is this young man lost his father. So for them to say that she's a ready-made family, it's like totally disrespectful in my eyes and everybody else's too, who, who can agree with me. Like she didn't ask to be a single mother. It was a devastation, a tragedy that happened in her life. And see, this is what I'm talking about with people. Everybody has a different circumstance and everybody has to learn to be able to get through it and be able to allow themselves to get through it. Now, this young lady, her son's father died when he was very young, probably a baby. I'm not going to ask because it's not my business in place. And if she really wanted me to know that, I'm pretty sure she would put it in there. But she just wanted me to basically know the reason why she is a single mother. And that's fine too, because she didn't even have to let me know that. But I think it went well and well with the fact that they are calling her a ready-made family. That's just totally disrespectful. Totally disrespectful. So what you mean to tell me is this lady doesn't deserve to be in a relationship with nobody ever again in life? Like, because she's a single mother? This is the one thing that a lot of people need to realize, okay? Just because we are single mothers don't mean that we don't deserve love. That's this is like this is like a trend now I noticed with men, not with women, some women, but I've noticed like there's a lot of these men, and I said this before, that been out here running their damn mouths, flapping off at the lips about single mothers. Oh, you don't fuck with single mothers. That's because she's a single mother. Why are we a single mother? Hmm? Why? Did we decide, you know what? I don't want to fucking be with you. You're so good. You're such a great man. I don't want to be with you. Is that what women are doing now? Are we telling men that we don't want to be with them because they're so great and they have like the best, Just they're just so great that we just rather be a single mother? Or, or is that what we're telling them? No. I think there's two people that play a huge part in someone being a single parent. Two people. You know what I'm saying? Let's not, let's stop blaming the women for that because a lot of times they blame the woman for it because oh well you should never slept with him well maybe he should have never lied and gave her dreams and aspirations that he really wasn't going to do just because he wanted to get in the drawers there are a lot of reasons why women are single mothers and i still feel like single women deserve love too everybody fucking deserves love but the fact that these people i'm pretty sure i'm i'm not pretty sure okay now i don't know kylie and i damn sure don't know her mother-in-law or her husband but g gather this just, just get this thought for a second 
I'm more than 110% positive that her mother-in-law knew the reason why she was a single mother. There's no way in God's green earth that you're about to sit here and tell me that that lady didn't know the reason why Kylie was a single mother. She knew. Either Kylie told her or her son told her. But I guarantee you, she knew. You know how I know she knew? Because she'd been part of this family. She'd been going to family events, family gatherings. She was accepted into the family. I'm pretty sure she knew. I know she knew, okay? That was a hot topic. Now, either Kylie told her or her husband told her. But either way, the bitch fucking knew, okay? And for her as a grown woman to go and behave the way she did at the reception for her son and her daughter-in-law was just disgusting. She agreed with the girls that this is the reason why she she don't deserve to be married because she's a ready-made family. Now, maybe the, the, maybe the down south cousins didn't know the reason why Kylie was a single mother. They didn't need to because that really wasn't their business. They were just there to celebrate and as, as you should have celebrated and kept your opinions to yourself. You know what I'm saying? But as the mother-in-law, she should have she should have not agreed with them and she should have put them in their place and she should have let them know she is a single mother and this is the reason why she deserves love too. But instead of the mother-in-law doing that, she just went along with them. Now, I'm not sure she has something to drink or not because you know what people say, once you got the liquor in you, the yak up in you, honey, this is when you start telling the truth about shit. And maybe that's how her mother-in-law felt since day one. But here's the thing, sweetheart, boo-boo, baby, your son, he's a single father too. He got a ready-made family as well. So then that made the same shit must go for him then as well. Then nobody shouldn't have nobody shouldn't have been married his ass neither. Regardless of how he became a single father, he shouldn't have been able to be married neither. Nobody should have wanted his ass either. Okay, because he got a ready-made family just as well. That's what I would have been saying if I was Kylie mother. But you know, Kylie mother was ready to put them hands on her at the wedding reception. And Kylie's father and brother had to back the mama down. They had to pull her to the side and let her know that is not demure and that's definitely not mindful. We're not about to be fighting people up here. You know something? Let me just tell y'all this. I hate the fact that grown people sometimes be acting like they don't know their age, okay? They act like they shoe size. Just real childish, real immature, real stupid as fuck, okay? I hate that you can go somewhere and just really not know how to behave. I hate the fact that other people could just ruin and destroy somebody else's good moments, you know what I'm saying? Because of their nonsense and their foolishness. I hate that for people. Like, learn how to behave. You're an adult, learn how to behave. If you know you're going to act the fuck up and don't know how to hold your liquor, then bitch, don't drink, okay? Maybe having an open bar for some people is not the thing to do. And it's unfortunate that we have to think like this ahead of time because you know having a drink or two is a great thing you know it loosens up your you know it just loosens you up a little bit but some people get a little bit too loosey-goosey and really don't know how to fucking act that's my opinion on people okay as a whole now as for your mother-in-law kylie and wanting to rekindle the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law bond sweetheart i would do this shit at my own time my own time when i feel like it when it's good for me and if you don't want to do that shit no time soon then i wouldn't neither okay because she'll get these she'll get my my voice my opinion when i feel like it not because she's ready to, but when you're ready to. And you could allow yourself to tell your husband that as well. I'm pretty sure he wants you and his mama to be like this, to be like a mother and daughter bond. But you know something, when you disrespect somebody to the utmost, it's on that person to try to rekindle the bond. Not talk to me because you're ready to. No. Listen, let me tell you something. I never, ever want to disrespect none of my in-laws that I had. But I had to finally put my foot down because just because you his mother, you not my motherfucking mother. Because at the end of the day, I'm somebody's mother too, okay? I'm somebody's mother just as well. And I think I deserve just I deserve respect just as well as you do, you know? So I, I bit my tongue for a very long time in voicing my opinions. But once I did, I motherfucking did, okay? And it was the end of that, okay? But I just feel like this. For certain people, they really don't have no cooth. You know, no decorum. They don't know how to act out in public. And those are the people that you really need to stay clear of. Now, as for your mother-in-law saying that you're a ready-made family, I don't know. Was it the look in her that made her say that? Or does she truly feel that way? This is the thing that I feel. You probably ain't never, ever going to know. Because I'm pretty sure she's not going to say to you with her sober state of mind, no, baby, I, I really felt that way. Because if that were me, I would never fucking tell you, yeah, I really did feel like that about you since day one. Because that's rude and disrespectful. And there's no way that I'm going to really make a person feel like this little about themselves in their circumstance, you know. And even if she did feel that way about you in real life without the drinks, girl, you can tell her, well, what about your son? He don't deserve to be married to me neither because he a ready-made family as well. Period, okay? What y'all thoughts on it? I'm just saying, you know, it is what it is. But you, you know what, Kylie? You talk to that lady when you feel like it. Talk to her when you feel like it, when it's good for you on your own terms. And don't allow anybody else to make you feel like you need to, okay? So on that note, I'm going to go. 
I hope you guys had a great day watching this. I hope you all have an amazing day. Whenever you're watching this video, leave your comments, your suggestions, your advice down below, or just maybe something about yourselves. You know what I'm saying? And let us know. But as for my two ladies, Michi, girl, I'm always available. You can always send me your phone number via email, and I would love to chit-chat with you. And as for Kylie, girl, you know what to do, baby. Shoot, when you ready to, okay? Tell your mother-in-law she can go ahead and kick rocks with no shoes on, straight up. I love y'all. Stay diva and delicious. Leave your comments below. Like the video on your way out if you have it when you came in. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Go, 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 go.